recording. Start streaming. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm just going to make sure that we are streaming correctly. Gotta make sure everything is working before we start. Hi, Katie, nice to see you. Um, also, since you are there, out there, can you hear me well? Just to make sure that my sound is good. All right, we will be getting started right now. Right now, right now, and right now. All right, so hello, hello. Welcome back to a day two of content that attracts via Instagram, y'all, via Instagram. This is where all the sales happen beyond moving outside of Instagram. This is where my business thrives so much. That is exactly why I want to teach you how to use these strategies to really implement them in your business and take your business to the next level. So today is all about talking to your clients and talking to your clients in their language because sometimes it's so easy to lose your clients and you have to understand that these are individuals that are not in your industry so when you are speaking to them as if they are reading a textbook, it's probably going to push them back and they're not going to continue reading your information. So it's so powerful when you can give that same information, but using their language, using the language that they want to understand from you so that they can push through the problem that they are having right now. So let's get started. All right, let's do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so the purpose of today is to start speaking in the language of your ideal client to deliver value to them on your feed and stories. It's so, so, so important to give value because not only do they see you as an authority, they also see you as someone that truly acknowledges how they can progress through this problem and how they can see how your services are truly going to help them in the end. So day two is all about using pain points and pleasure points to start supporting your clients. All right, so let's discuss what you can use in your content to make your pieces even more powerful. So in the beginning, we just want to start spreading our message and that is definitely okay. But it's easy to create posts that are all about us, what we're going through, and that is not, depending on how you put your post, it's not going to drive them to your services. It's not going to drive them to see you as an authority. But so we have to remember that this business, this business is mainly to serve our audience, okay? And serving them by helping them move past what they are struggling with at this point in time. Okay, so <laughs> it's not about you. Like I said before, your business is not about you. We get to use our story to inspire, but not take the value and impact away from our audience. Because if you have seen my posts on Instagram, yes, I will talk about what I have gone through, but I talk about it in a way that it gives 
people inspiration, that it gives them the ability to see, wow, she started where I am and now look where she has gone. So that is how you want to incorporate your story to take you to the next level. And also as coaches, we get to acknowledge that our clients are truly struggling with something and help them move forward. And when individuals make purchases, I'm gonna come back over here. When individuals make purchases, they purchase on emotion, okay? So think about something that you recently purchased and was it just like, oh, I really need this? It was more like it was you felt it in your soul, like, oh, this is gonna do so much for me. I really need this. Oh, it feels so good to buy this, right? So people are doing the same thing with your program, with your product, things like that. So think of your <laughs> think of your your service as like a new iPhone. People see all these shiny things and they see how it's going to help them. They see how it's going to improve their life and make it easy for them to connect. That's how your programs, that's how your services should be to people as well. Making it making them know that having this program, having this service is going to make their life that much easier, okay? Okay. Uh, so yes, people use emotions to truly take that next step and in investing in something. And we can hit these emotions by using pain points and pleasure points. So what's an emotion, y'all? An emotion is a natural instinctive state of mind deriving from one's circumstances, mood, or relationships with others. So think about a time in your life where you were just not having it. Things were not going well. You weren't feeling supported in some way and you just fell in it, right? You just fell in it. So then people that we're trying to sell our services to, that is where they are. They are just sitting in it. They are not happy with where they are in their life right now. And all they want to do is freaking move forward. All they want to do is move forward. So when you can talk to them in their language and they literally think, this person is in my mind, that is when you start getting those sales. That is when your business just goes from here all the way to there because you are connecting with your audience, okay? All right, so what is a pain point? The pain point is what they are struggling with right now and just can't seem to move forward. It's that main problem. Maybe it's weight loss. Maybe it's building a business. Maybe it's self-sabotaging thoughts. It's things that they just want to be able to get rid of and be just be bygone and be like, I am free from that. So they have tried everything, but nothing seems to work for this pain point. And this is the emotion they want to ultimately dismiss. So like I said before, when you are just sitting in it, and you just can't feel any other way out, you've tried everything, this is when people are ready to take that next leap. And sometimes using these pain points, people are sitting, people are sitting in these emotions, but they're not ready to buy because it's not activated in them. They're kind of just going through the motions. So when you take these pain points and you allow them to read them, digest them, that's when things inside of them start to click. So before you even get on a sales call, you're already starting to sell them into your program by using these pain points because you're starting the process of them acknowledging, damn, this is this this is not how I want to live my life. This is not how I want to feel. She's okay, okay, what does she have to offer to me that can make me get past this? So it pain points, it's already starting to sell your packages. Okay. All right. Next. So when you have a pain point, you also have a pleasure point. So go back to the screen, y'all. I'm back. All right. So with pain points and pleasure points, they go hand in hand. Pain points on one side, pleasure points on the other side. It's like the yin and yang. So when you are here, if you can correct the pain point, then you get to the pleasure point. And this is where your client wants to get to. So let's go into pleasure points. So a pleasure point is where, and you even said, you, you hear how I said it, pleasure points. It just feels good, right? So that's how people want to feel. That's how when you 
deliver your services and you deliver your content, you want them to have that emotion when they read it. Do you want to get to that point where you are earning 5K months and you can take your family on a vacation without even checking your bank account? Do you want that pleasure in your life of just knowing you have financial freedom, right? So that pleasure point is where they want to eventually get to and end their struggle, where they can breathe again, where they can fully live the life that they desire. And this emotion, this is what they ultimately want to reach, okay? This is their main goal. And that is what your program is solving. But before they even get to that program, they have to understand that you know exactly where they are. You know exactly, they just want to be heard. You know exactly where they are and then they know that you can take them to that other side. So that's when all the beautiful coaching comes in. I'm even getting just chill saying this stuff, y'all, because it's beautiful. It's beautiful being able to impact someone to this level where it's not you're not just selling them on your package. You're literally helping them understand that they are not happy right now and they can move past this. So that's the beauty of it because I know a lot of marketing and sales, it can be so icky, but when you change your perspective on it and just come from a place of like, I'm really trying to impact people in this world to move forward, that's when shifts in your business just go above and beyond. All right, so we are going to do some comparisons to pain points and pleasure points, okay? And obviously pain points and pleasure points go all over the charts. There are so many different types of coaching, life coach, nutrition, um, mindset coaching above and beyond, right? So you pick your target audience and that's where you get to fill in your pain points. But since I am in business, this is the example that I am giving you of the, what my clients genuinely struggle with. So pain points, no clients coming into your coaching practice, lacks confidence as a coach, unable to write content to speak to your audience, no engagement with your post or your services, horribly failed sales calls, scared of failing as a coach, can hardly pay bills with income from coaching, no idea where to start building a business, and lacks direction with building a brand and marketing themselves. So these are pain points that people might be experiencing within building a business, building a coaching service, okay? So now I'm going to take these exact pain points line by line and change them into pleasure points to see that yes, you are here, but you can also get to here, okay? So here we go. Pleasure points, clients, Packed on your wait list for your next program. Extremely confident and clear in your direction as a coach. Able to put out content that drives people straight to your DMs. Tons of people engaging with you and asking about your services. Successful launches that bring your monthly income 5K plus. Able to close 80% of your sales calls. No doubt in your ability as a coach. Can pay all bills plus take dream vacations, has a solid business strategy to scale your biz to six figures, and you are able to market your services in your sleep, okay? So that is basically just looking at where someone is starting and looking at where they are going. But also, when it comes to that and using language to market to them, like I said prior, before when we first started, you experience things different from when you were there and when you are here. So that's why it is 100% important to listen to the words that your clients are saying, that your potential clients are saying, so that you can actually use their language in your marketing. So how to find these golden pain points? Market research, market, market research. But beyond knowing your audience's pain points and pleasure points, it's important to use their language like I just stated. And as I said it again, as coaches, we have already been through these struggles. Therefore, our wording and our emotions are different from actually being in the moment and experiencing those pain points. 
So market research, you will learn detailed pain and pleasure points by actually speaking to your audience. So what do you have to do? You have to get on the phone, okay? So when you do market research calls, you can get on the phone and you can start to ask them questions as well. As if you don't have a program yet, you can start to ask them what they want in a program, how they would want to kind of go through a program and what they would invest in. So then when you build your program, people already want it. You're not just building it for a ghost client. You know, you're building it for the masses that want to solve this one problem. So a market research call is basically just asking your audience, hey, I'm doing market research. I would love to give you uh, 30 minutes of coaching for, to ask you some questions. So basically you're just giving them 30 minutes of coaching and then you'll be asking them all these questions and kind of helping them through things as well. But as you are doing that, you get to write down their pain points, you get to write down their pleasure points, you get to write down the words that they are using to describe all this and then you get to take all that juiciness and use it for your marketing and make that bigger impact, okay? And that's why market research is so, so powerful. And yes, you gotta take time to do it, but it's going to help you in your business and it's 100% worth doing it. So even if it's just like three to five people, that is three. those are three to five people that could potentially be clients for you because they already see that you stepped into authority and you are coaching them, even if it's just 30 minutes, you are giving them little shifts in their lives that, they, that something inside of them releases. Like, oh, you know? People want to experience that. And you can even do that in 30 minutes of just having a simple free call with them, okay? So market research. These are questions that you can ask them while you are doing this on the call. And obviously you can always cater it to your target audience. And then anything else that you have questions about, you can add on to this. So for example, what do you struggle with daily? What is this struggle holding you back from in life? Okay, these are questions that this is where you get their pleasure points. And then how would your quality of life improve with this service? What have you tried over the years to fix this issue? And then you can also add in what what would it feel like if, and you can add on what you have your target audience. What would it be like if? Give them open-ended questions so that they can start thinking about how it would feel to be out of this problem that they're having right now. And then, so of course, of course, I have some homework for you guys. I have so, not a lot of homework for you guys. Um, okay, I just I just switched back over to see anyone in the chat box and oh my God, I'm all these pain points. See, I got you girl, I told you. I got you, I connect with you. But now you can see what I did and you can take this and you can use it with your audience. So they're just like, oh my God, yes girl, please. <laughs> okay, so homework. I want you guys to... Dun, dun, dun. I want you guys to jump on one to three market research calls. And you can do this by simply just putting out polls on your Instagram and just saying, hey, I'm doing, I'm doing, I can't speak now. I'm doing 30 minutes of, I'm doing market research calls and I would love to offer you 30 minutes of free coaching. And then you could just say like, would you be interested? Yes. Would you be interested? I'm going to tell you something about polls as well. So you can just ask them yes or maybe and things like that, or you can ask them to DM you, or if there are already people that you kind of know that are your target market, then you can ask them these questions as well. And also when it comes to polls, so usually it's a yes and no, but you don't really want to give people the option to say no. So maybe it's a yes or it's a maybe still thinking about it. So you never want to give them op the option just to be like, I don't want that. I don't want to do it. Give them that option to think about it more and let it kind of flow within them. All right. So beyond that, there is still a giveaway. The giveaway is still going. So if you want to enter the giveaway, um, all you have to do is create a list of 15 pain points and pleasure points. And all you would do is the same thing that I did. You write down your 15 
pain points and then right next to it you make them into pleasure points okay and then if you want to do that all you have to do is email me at melissa at melissa b dot bates as well as if we are instagram friends you can definitely find me on instagram and send them to me there to make it easy for you guys so today's training was a bit shorter, a lot shorter than yesterday, let's be real. But tomorrow is basically, that's when we dive into content and I tell you how to start using these beautiful pain and pleasure points and making that impact in your content, okay? Because we don't want any non-authority content. We don't want content that's not doing anything. We want content that is hooking people out there and making them want to change their lives and jump in their in our programs to do that. So now I want to ask you, do you have any questions on any of this beautiful pain and pleasure points? Katie, I know it's just you right now. So do you have any questions, girl? Let me know if you have any questions. Just waiting a little bit to see if you have any questions. And then if not, I will be ending this. But of course, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me, either via Instagram or via this Facebook group. Just write questions and I will get back to you ASAP. I'm a very prompt person. You know this. You know this by now. Okay, so then I don't think you have any questions right now. So, yes, in the comments, sorry, in one of the posts prior to this, I did put a PDF with the marketing questions in there so that you can just download that PDF and then you have those questions for you to go into your market research calls, okay? And then if you have any more questions about really trying to get people into your market research calls, just connect with me and I will help you walk through the process um, in more detail. But basically just asking people to give you feedback and you give them feedback. It's like a beautiful exchange. Um, but yeah, with further ado, with further ado, what am I talking about y'all? Anyways, Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate all of you guys. I'm so excited that you are here to truly level up your business and just take the time to know that you have to make improvements to get to the level that you want to. And that's the beautiful thing because we are always improving. I'm always improving. I always have spaces in my life to improve because as humans, we are ever evolving. So never feel bad. Never feel you support. Never feel inferior to any type of people in your industry that might be somewhat above you or really, really high above you because guess what? They started at the bottom and they they worked their asses up to get to that top. So never feel inferior to anyone. You have, you have an abundance of knowledge in you that you are ready to impact this world with. And also when it comes to just getting out there. Sometimes as coaches, when we first start, we have so much information, but we feel like we just have to keep on giving it, taking and taking and taking and taking. But if we're not making any moves to actually putting it out in the world, we're doing ourselves a disservice as well as the people that we can impact. So make sure as you do take in the knowledge, you also feed it back into the world so that you are building up your authority and your business and you are just going to create the business of your dreams, y'all. So I'm going to get off now because you know I can, I can keep talking. But I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.